always up. I've got myself a new little toy. But today, I was promised cloudy weather. So I was like, gonna shoot black and white. Gonna do a lovely video explaining different ways how we can, yeah, just enjoy shooting in cloudy conditions. And it's now sunshine. <laughs> so we're just gonna wander around. We're gonna still experiment with black and white, but maybe it's like different to what I initially intended, but we will make it work. Thank you very much to um, Hermes, the son of Zeus, for the oat flat white from FCB. I cannot wait to devour that and to feel all caffeinated and stimulated. So that's the plan. Let's roll. We've got this shadow down here. We've got these trees. It's casting a nice little strip down here. We've got scratch papers on these people. However, these people are against a dark background. So you can't really see them in black and white. So if I go any higher, I'm then getting these trees to be in the way. So, ooh, that's a new subject. Close. I'm gonna move away from there. Ooh, over there. Looks like there's some nice lines going across the frame. Let's go explore. So there's people walking down this little bit here. Got to a point where they're they're being illuminated from this side as well. And you can see it here with my hand slightly brighter and it's meant that they're being illuminated from probably something oh look all the way up there there's something reflecting straight down which means that they're an interesting batch of light which is interesting in itself so we have an interesting subject doing i don't know something not particularly interesting like walking that's how you can start to add visual interest to your image so there's a girl over there taking photos, what well, looks like professionally. And seeing someone like that absolutely fills me with joy. It's just another person who is making money through their camera, which is such, such an incredible feeling and incredible experience. It's taken this person such a long time to develop their skills enough to get to a point where they are able to charge for their photos. And so much work has gone into this vision that no one knows whether it's gonna pay off. And to see someone else doing that, Ah, oh, fills me with absolute joy. So whoever you are, big up. So this is the super famous street photography location um, by the Bank of England. And why it's so cool is there's, well, I'll show you, this little patch, or well, this little entrance way here, or well, this little entrance way here, we've got this cool circle up here, but we've also got this space here. So it means that there's just like a lot of interesting light and a lot of interesting opportunities to shoot through, to find angles, to yeah, just like experiment. 
and so I really like coming here and just seeing seeing what um, what I can shoot, seeing what there is. At the moment, it's not particularly sunny, um, even though it was sunny earlier. I say that as as the sun is literally coming out. So uh, yeah, experiment while we can. The uh, biggest problem with this spot is that it stinks of piss. So it's pretty minging to stand around in, but photos, fire, so. Is that a good trade-off? something so hyper stimulating about street photography and I think that it's that the scene will just carry on without you if you don't have your settings right if you're not fully prepared if you're not standing in the right position the scene moves on the scene doesn't care and that I find puts me under so much like I guess internal pressure which then encourages me to be thinking so so quickly and to, yeah keep on experimenting keep trying new things and there's two techniques that I find that I'm typically doing one of them is I found a scene and there's a subject that I think is going to move in a certain direction. So it's like, okay, if I am predicting that this person or this subject is going to go here, how do I make that composition as I want it to? Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I've predicted it wrong and the uh, person or subject goes exactly where I want it to, but it just doesn't work. And sometimes they, they just go in a completely different direction and it's just like, well, I, I didn't predict that right. And the other way is that you've seen something interesting, but you don't think it's gonna form a composition. You don't think it's gonna move into a scene that you think is interesting. So it's like, okay, if, if I think that's true, how do I then make a composition out of nothing? And I find that I'm just constantly flipping between these two, which is what makes it hyper simulating, because then it means that I'm having to adapt how I'm shooting over and over and over again in order to get the shot that I think that I want. And that, oh, I absolutely love it. Gang, I've been absolutely rinsing this uh, Fred again boiling mix. I cannot describe to you how sick it is. It is the mix of the summer. So if you're into your house music, give this a listen. <laughs> 